This is a video to accompany the King's Guards designed to celebrate the coronation of King Charles III. And so I've done, after a little bit of research to really make sure that I felt quite confident in recreating um, such important and obviously symbolic uniforms, I decided to go for a foot soldier. So this is obviously the classic design um, and of soldier that people recognise outside Buckingham Palace, um, very much associated with Britain and the UK. So there's the big bearskin cap. Um, and to do that, you'll need to be able to do loop stitch, and then you've got lots of different details right the way around that doll that I'll just show you. Um, and then when I started that research, I really had to think um, and looked into the type of guard I wanted to create because there's small details to do with where the buttons are and to do with where the plume um, goes onto that cap that will let you know which type of guard that is. So it's actually a grenadier guard um, that I have recreated here. But if you fancy learning a little bit more about that, then of course, do some research and you can always sew your buttons where you wish in order to represent a different kind of guard. And then this one, is part of the um, household cavalry. Um, I, I I absolutely um, love this big. I guess really classically eccentrically um, British horsehair um, detail on the hat that they're wearing, on the helmet that they're wearing. Um, so I've really gone to town on this one. There's lots of different details. And that's why I just want to do a video for you to go through um, some of the different techniques that you're using so you feel confident when you are putting your dolls together. Now, the the only other thing to mention is that they, I have used a limited edition gold yarn to create both of these. So this is a yarn spun with a gold lurex and it's actually not our yellow. So for anyone um, that is familiar with Toff colours, this is specifically gold. It's a more muted um, gold uh, colour rather than that classic yellow and it's been spun with that sparkle. And in addition to that, um, we haven't got endless stock, but the first ones will also come with the limited edition silver sparkle as well. So you'll be working with a silver sparkle and a gold sparkle um, fit to celebrate the coronation, really. A little bit of um, extra luxury for a king. So let's start with a few different techniques. Now, the first one I want to show you is a French knot. So this is actually embroidery technique, not a... Um, not a crochet technique and that's how I've chosen to add the buttons on. This gives you the freedom to be able to put the buttons wherever you want them to be and as I just said what's important about that is the fact that that means that you can look up which kind of guard you want to represent because it could be the Welsh guard, it could be the Scots guard. Do a little bit of research and you'll find that the buttons are clustered in a different way on the uniforms of the different guards. So secure your yarn into the fabric at the top point where you want to start the buttons. And then to do a French knot, what you need to do is take your needle and do one, two, three, four wraps around your needle like that. So you've wrapped the yarn around four times and then you sew back in to the fabric where you've come from like that. Gently pull that through and that just tucks that into a little neat knot like that. And the great advantage of, you're gonna be sewing these on afterwards um, once your doll is stuffed. So the great advantage of doing it French knot is the fact that you're not going to have to rejoin yarn every time. You can just sew inside like that, a couple of rows down. I've done mine spread out by two rows for each button um, because I've gone for the classic formation of a straight line of equally spaced buttons. And um, like I said, have a look at what you want to do before you choose which guard you're, you're making. So come through again. One, two, three and four. This is really about practice. If this is totally new to you and it's something you haven't done before, the more of it you do, the neater you will get. So it might be worth before you go for your final buttons on your soldier and um, practice it on something else. Because actually, as you can see there, my first one wasn't as neat there as I've actually managed to get since. Um, my hands are sitting pretty cold this morning. Um, so do a bit of practice first. So you've got those nice and neat and then you'll be able to just run down and put all those buttons in a lovely straight line, uh, not just on the front of your soldier's uniform, but actually on the back backs as well as I've used those to put the buttons in place on the back detail of the uniform too. So that's French knots. Um, and just to show you, because that's the helmet that I've put those onto, they are very easy to then pull off. So don't worry if you're not happy with them. You can obviously always pull that back and then try them again. So let's pull that off before we go on to the next thing. So then the next thing to show you is I've used a lot of slip stitches in these patterns. And I think that's because the military uniforms that I'm trying to represent are obviously so neat and crisp 
that I really want straight lines in order to be able to actually um, work them. And so slip stitches are so suited to that because they're obviously quite a short, neat stitch. So I've used slip stitches quite a lot. And what I want to show you is how to make, say, an epaulette for a shoulder. And this is the same technique that I've used for the belt. And it involves basically turning a chain into a round by going right round the outside of it, but only using slip stitches. So I'm going to do an example um, on, say, eight stitches, but this would be exactly the same whether you're doing eight for a small epaulette, whether you're doing 10 or 12, or whether you're even doing kind of like 30 to 40 for a belt. You would chain the, them to begin with. So chain the number stated to three, four, five, six, seven, and eight I'm going to do. And then what you do is you work back down that chain with slip stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you've chained up and then you've slip stitched back down to your bottom slip knot. Then what you need to do is turn that round. So you've got the other side of the starting chain there and slip stitch down the edge of that. And then turn it one more time. So you're back to your original return slip stitch row. And this time, slip stitch again, but come right the way through the whole of that slip stitch. So go beneath both sides of the V like that. And this, this is a bit fiddly and slow. And um, there's no two ways about it. It is. So take your time and relax about it. It is a little bit more fiddly than working the double crochet. But what it gives you is a really neat, crisp edge to these stitches. There we go, like that. So go in beneath the whole V, yarn over through that one and through that one. So slip stitch right the way down those full slip stitches that you did on the initial chain. And it just gives you a really neat, tight, crisp finish, which is perfect for capturing military uniform rather than um, using kind of the longer stitches, which might give you a bit more of an open fabric. So my big advice there really is take your time. Don't rush it. Take your time working these slip stitches. Um, if you're really, really struggling, then you might want to consider using a bigger hook when you do your initial chain. If you're a particularly tight crocheter, you might feel like you're, you're fighting a battle a little bit there. So use a bigger crochet hook when you do your first chain. But do you see how you get such a lovely, even piece of fabric that has those matching Vs on either side with a piece of dense fabric through the middle. That's why I've opted to use slip stitches like this on things like the epaulettes. So the other thing very much related to that that I want to show you then is how um, this is done here. So the cross strap that's got a very, very neat, even line through the middle of it. I want to show you how I've achieved that. And that's actually um, exactly the same as I've just shown you, but you've got the introduction of a colour in addition to that. So what I would do there is I'm going to do this on eight stitches again is so I chain eight in my cream four, five, six, seven and eight. And this becomes the outside colour. Obviously, I am doing it in cream, but I'm actually going to do the strip of red in gold this time. So you can see that in contrast. So I've chained my um, stitches in my cream. And what I'm actually going to do is return in my gold. So I'm going to leave my cream end there and don't break the yarn on that. Leave that there. Join in your gold and then slip stitch back down to the other end in your contrasting colour. Let me just try that again. Hang on like that. So slip stitch back down that chain in your contrasting colour that will become the middle of your stripe. like that. You can actually break your gold yarn and pull that through so that that's secure. So um, your contrasting colour you can break off. And then what you're actually going to do is get a hold of your cream again, which is why I said not to break it. And we're going to come back down the edge of the contrasting stripe. So I've rejoined my cream by popping that back on my hook. And I'm just going to go into the cream stitch like that and slip stitch down there. Okay. 
And when you get to the bottom of one side, what that'll have done is put a really neat set of Vs um, on one side. So we just need to get that on the other side so it's it's symmetrical. So turn it round like we did do in the epaulettes before and then slip stitch into the other side in exactly the same way that we did. And what that does is it puts those really neat line of cream edging on so you've got a lovely, neat, even stripe that's totally symmetrical. And you see what you create is a lovely, you've got a raised contrasting stripe down the middle and it's perfectly neat from both sides and symmetrical. So that's how, um, that's the technique that I've used to create the striped cross strap on the um, cavalry um, soldier. Right, so next thing to show you really is when you're slip stitching in. So the way that the jackets are created is you have actually got a colour change in the body. So I'll just I'll just lift that up. I'd tack that into place. Um, but you have actually got a colour change in the body here between the top and the bottom. And when you're rejoining, just make sure that you're double crocheting into the colour that you're using. So the instruction will say to double crochet into the colour change line. Obviously, you can see where your colour change line is between the two colours. But just to clarify, if you were doing it in ruby and you were doing it around these stitches here, you'll end up with a small line of cream. So, yes, it is into the colour change line, but it's into that there, if you see what I mean. So it's sitting just above the cream stitches. And that way, you'll end up with a smooth um, transition of a piece where you've got ruby on ruby rather than small bubbles of cream. Um, so just to troubleshoot that one, if you are rejoining and you, because you double crochet straight into these stitches here, just make sure it's in the row just, well, the round just above the colour change line. Um, you can still see the cream stitches are right in there. And that means that you won't get small dots of cream in the bottom um, of your red jacket when you transition. So that's that one clarified. Then another thing just to show you, uh, which some of you may have done before, um, because it is uh, something that I've used in um, the head elf pattern, is to create what's called the aguilettes, which are um, kind of uh, medals or um, medals of honour, really, that you wear around like this. All you do is fold the yarn in half, you twist it. So it's not really a crochet technique, and that's why I wanted to make sure you had all of these in one place. You twist it, same way that you would make tassels sometimes to go on a shawl or a scarf. So twist it like that. And then what you do is you fold the yarn in half. You let it twizzle in on itself like that. And then all you do is you tie a knot at one end. Obviously snip that off. And that is the piece that you're then sewing on that becomes those. So it's got a lovely little twist to it. Once you've twisted it and you've knotted it off and folded it in half, it can't unravel. It balances itself out because you fold them in half like that. So you can add as many or as few of those as you wish. Um, I've obviously given you the pattern for one of them, but you could design decide to really adorn um, your guard and add several of those on should you wish. A nice, easy technique. Um, and again, giving you the flexibility to kind of customise these however you want to. So the last thing to really qualify, um, clarify is the rows on the boots. So this is when it comes to the boots of this soldier and his cap is the fact that you um, do move to rows in the pattern. So don't panic when you see that. You're crocheting rounds to a point and then you do move to rows where you turn. And that's because um, with their boots, because they are obviously um, mounted on a horse, they have them lower at the back and much, much higher at the front um, to protect them. So you do move to rows. That is correct. You just carry on turning um, and doing your stitches back on yourself. And that's exactly the way that the peaked cap is made too. So this is the helmet. And when it comes to doing the peak, what you'll do, you see my stitch markers here, which is where I've been working in rounds. You'll move to just working some of the stitches and then you actually turn and go back on yourself. But there's one thing that I really want to show you about this hat, just, just to make sure that you feel really confident when you're putting it together. Once you've made the silver piece like that, what it gets edged with is gold. Um, so it's got a gold trim that runs right the way around the edge. And what you need to do is rejoin after the peak. So not where your um, stitch marker is. Now, as a right-handed person, that's this way. It'll be the other way around if you're a left-handed um, crocheter. But I'll be rejoining not where my, where my um, stitch marker is, actually on this side here. And once again, we're going to use a slip stitch just to edge it really neatly. So you go into the next stitch, 
yarn over and through and you are just slip stitching all the way around the cap edge till you get back to the peak. And then when you get back to where the peak is, what you need to do is we're going to edge in a double crochet and it will just neatly take away anything that's uneven in the fact that you've come off a corner. You've kind of tried to turn a circle into a bit of a square by moving to rows. So all you need to do is double crochet into the edge like that. And that'll just neaten off the whole of that peak And it is only the peaked section that you're double crocheting on. So you slip stitch around the back and then it accentuates the shape of this peak by doing double crochets through all of those front stitches like that. So I just wanted to clarify that bit really. And then talk a little bit about this hat's construction, um, because that might be um, something that is a little bit um, hard to get your head around. So the way that you're making it is you're making a solid, um, I guess, classic hat like this. And then you're going to stuff this central column and that's the bit that we then attach it into. So you're going to stuff that central column. You're definitely going to need the heel end of your hook to push it down into the bottom there and stuff it pretty firmly. Um, on this occasion, I know that often I'll say not to stuff firmly. Go for it on this occasion because you want it to carry um, that top top knot piece um, kind of with pride and straight up. So make sure you put plenty of stuffing into this piece. Um, so it's nice and firm. Always remember you can use the tail end of your hook as well. So you can use the, the that end to tease yarn down into that section as you get your stuffing in. I'm going to go for a little bit more. And then when it comes to sewing it together, you actually create this um, rose piece separately that goes that goes on top. And then you place the bottom of this into that. So when you actually construct it, you'll have the rose piece there. You put this in like that and then you fold over the tops. And that's the bit I want to show you because that's the kind of thing that is, a, again, a very simple technique, but it's quite hard to write into words so that you feel confident when you're putting it together. So stuff that nice and neatly like that. You'll put that piece inside the rose to go on the top so it stands off. And then when it comes to putting together the... Um, horse hair piece that goes into the top all you'll need to do is fold yarn obviously to all the dimensions stated in the pattern so you'll fold up yarn like that and then the way that I found it easiest was actually by tying again obviously follow the dimensions in the pattern um because it's a little bit more more strands than I've done there take this and tie it together like that so you've put a knot through the center of your folded bits and then use these ends here to actually sew it really securely into the top of there so take those string those up on your needle and then go in to the center of this piece and I would leave your ends long enough when you knot them through the middle to actually get this right the way through the centre if you can. Now, I've probably made your life hard by telling you to put so much stuffing in, but you should be able to do it right the way through like that. And that will make that really secure. So there's no way that those bits can come out of the top of the helmet later on. And you can then always sew those right the way through and just secure them on the inside of the helmet because you won't see that at all. Um, um, the big thing to mention too is the fact that I haven't actually used stuffing it in this one at all. Um, so the helmet just goes straight onto the head. Um, and with this one, I have put stuffing in, um, but not too much, just enough that it doesn't go flat, that it keeps that lovely 3D shape when you're putting them together. I um, feel very proud of these two pieces. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed the research um, to have made them as well. Um, and I hope you really enjoy making these pieces to mark um, the King's coronation. It is, it is a point in history um, and now you've got your two guards to proudly put on display um, and remember the king's coronation.